Hello. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this very simple but effective stitch pattern. I've coined it the perforated pinstripe pattern and it's quite simple. It only uses double crochets, uh, US double crochets, so that's UK trebles, and US half doubles or UK half trebles. Um, it's really nice because it's it's not a completely solid fabric um, it has got these what I call perforations um, and also it's not completely open and lacy so it makes it quite good for garments where you you don't want a completely solid stitch but at the same time you want a bit of modesty especially if you're working in a slightly smaller um, hook and yarn um, you get this very fine beautiful drapey fabric that's perfect for summer tops. So this stitch pattern for this top that I've designed, um, I have actually, the the top is crocheted from side to side so this is how the stitch looks um, as you're crocheting it but I've actually used it vertically in this top to give this nice kind of um, pinstripe effect. Um, if you want to see more details of this top um, please do visit my blog mesacraft.com where you will be able to find the pattern. So that top is crocheted with a four ply yarn and a 2.75 millimeter hook um, and that gives kind of a really nice drape for um, a garment. The yarn is a wool and silk blend to give it a really nice drape. Additionally, because of the way light shines on silk, it means that these horizontal stitches here, they catch the light slightly differently. So you can see it more on this silvery yarn. Um, it just gives a really interesting texture, especially if, you, if you're if you seeing it in daylight with the light shining off it. These um, wrapped stitches, they catch the light slightly differently. So this is a sample in a very similar yarn. Um, and then I wanted to make another top the same in four ply and I had some four ply cotton which um, I crocheted up but I actually decided not to go with this because if you see the difference in um, the drape of the fabric this is very stiff so I think this four ply there is quite a lot of variation in yarn thicknesses I think this four ply was actually uh, quite a thick four ply and also cotton doesn't really have um, very much give to it Whereas there's a lot more, uh, this four ply is, has a lot, is a lot softer and a lot drapier right from the word go. So it's just something worth considering. Um, if Obviously if you're just make, using this stitch pattern to make something else like a blanket or cushion cover or you know maybe a part of a different kind of garment that requires a different drape, then um, you might find you know the cotton is okay. And that's why I always suggest swatching, especially when you're making garments, because it's it's not just about getting the gauge spot on so that the, the item will fit you. It's also about just seeing whether you actually like the fabric that will result um, in using the stitch pattern, the hook size and getting the gauge. All those three things can make quite a big difference to to what the fabric is like and whether it's going to make something that you're actually going to like wearing. So um, another thing I'll just quickly point out before I show you a few more swatches is that for this um, for this stitch pattern and actually the top that I made I had to go down a hook size for the starting chain. So again this is why it's really important to swatch because these things can um, show themselves to you. So here you can see it's another another sample that I crocheted up um, with the same hook size but what you'll notice is I didn't 
I didn't switch um, hook sizes for the starting chain. I used a 2.75 millimeter chain for the uh, hook for the starting chain, which made the chain the chain doesn't match the gauge of the stitches. So it means that this bottom end of my swatch is is, is sort of distorted. It's too long. Um, so which means if you're making a top or a garment or a blanket you're going to end up with um, the bottom or top depending on where you've started being much too uh, too big so in the case of this if you're making the top um, it means one of your side seams will be out of proportion so this is why I'm doing a swatch is so important um, because you can identify things like uh, the difference in your the gauge of your chain compared to the rest of your stitches. So then I'm switched from a 2.75. Um, I actually used a two millimeter hook to make the chain, and then for row one I switched to a 2.75, and then that gives me um, the correct gauge for my chain matching the rest of the stitches. So I'm going to quickly show you, uh, before we show you how to make the actual stitch, I'm just going to quickly show you um, the same stitch pattern in some different yarns and thicknesses. So this is a double knit, um, or kind of thick sport weight, and I've crocheted this up with a 3.5 millimeter hook. And then here I've got a worsted weight or Aran weight yarn which I've crocheted up with a 4.5 millimeter hook. So you can see that the different yarns, the different thicknesses of yarn and the different hook size do make quite, quite a different kind of fabric that you could use for all kinds of things. This would probably make quite a nice cowl. Um, this could make quite a nice baby blanket or a crib blanket you know, where you don't want the holes being too big. Yeah, there's all sorts of possibilities. You can see a stitch in a whole different light when you um, change the type of yarn and the hook size. So this double knit is a super fine merino and this is just a um, pure wool, but a nice, a nice soft pure wool. And each one catches the light differently and shows the stitches up in a slightly different way. So for the sake of this video, for the um, tutorial of the actual stitch pattern, I'm going to be using a 2.75 millimeter hook with a four ply yarn. Um, so obviously the actual stitch pattern, um, you can use this, this stitch pattern with a variety of different hook sizes and yarns, which I'll give suggestions in my blog post. So please do visit mezacraft.com if you need some additional information. Or also in my blog, I provide details of all the yarns I've used um, in my video. So this is a three stitch pattern repeat. So each of these pattern repeats is three stitches. If you are working, um, in the flat, so i.e. you're working um, front and back rather than the round. I'm going to start with a slip knot loop on the hook. I'm starting with the smaller um, hook here. I've got a 2.5 millimeter hook and I'm going to chain um, 26. So I'm going to make sure that my chains are true to hook size. So as mentioned before this means that when you crochet you are keeping the loop exactly the same size as the diameter of the hook rather than extending the loop and that way it keeps the stitches um, really neat. So you're going to chain 26. Now you're going to switch to the larger hook. Um, in this case I'm only going up to a 2.75 
and this next, uh, the first row is just double crochets. So I'm going to skip, um, so that's US double crochets, UK uh, treble crochets. So I'm going to skip three chains and working into the back ridge of the chain. So if you see here, that's the left loop of the chain and the right loop of the chain. I'm flipping the chain over and working into the back ridge or the third loop of the chain. So one, two, three, skip three and double crochet into the fourth. So I'm going to work along here, putting one double crochet into each ridge of the chain. And again, remember we are working true to the hook size. So we're keeping that live loop not too tight, but more or less exactly the same size as the hook to keep everything really neat. So I'm going to go ahead and put one double crochet into each of the backs of these chains and I'll meet you back at the at the end. So here are you should have um, 24 stitches um, and you're counting the turning chain where you skip the three uh, chains, you're counting that as a stitch. Now we're going to move on to row two. We're going to chain two and turn the work. From now on, at the start of every round, there's going to be a chain two turning chain. This chain is never going to be worked into and nor is it ever counted as a stitch. It's literally just to get us to the right height um, and it just sort of blends into the edge. So chain two, turn the work and now we're going to do a half double. That's a half double US or a half treble UK, which is just as a re reminder is yarn over into the stitch, put up a loop. You've got three on your hook and yarn over, draw off all three. That is a half double or a UK half treble. Next we're going to skip a stitch and then we're going to put one half double into each of the next two stitches. So skip a stitch, yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw off all three. Same again in the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw off all three. So we've just made two um, half double crochets. So the next stitch, we actually we are actually going to work around those two stitches we've just made. So where we've skipped a stitch and there's a little hole there, we're actually going to go into that space, remembering to yarn over first because you're doing a half double. So yarn over into that space, pull up a loop. You've got three. Yarn over, draw off three. So we're now going to repeat that sequence of the three half doubles. So we're going to skip a stitch, we're going to half double into the next stitch, half double into the next stitch, then the third half double is worked around the two half doubles you've just made. Or if you like to think of it another way, you're going into that into the space you've made by skipping a stitch. And we're going to continue like that to the end. Skip a stitch, two half doubles, half double round the two just made. So I'm going to carry on like that and I'll meet you at the end of the row. So I'm come to the end of the row and the last stitch, the last half double, is going to be made in the top of the turning chain. So we're going to skip the um, first proper double crochet we did in row one, and then we're going to um, half double into that chain. So through both loops of the chain, making sure the third part of the chain is at the back. So you want to avoid 
just going into that space because it makes a hole. You also want to avoid just picking up one loop because it looks can look a bit messy. You need to treat that chain just as if it was a stitch by going through both loops. So half double into the last stitch, which is the chain, three turning chain. So your work should look like this. Now we're ready to do row three. So again, we're going to chain two. I'm going to turn the work and remember this does not count um, as any stitch. And we never work into it either. The next row is all um, double crochets. So we're going to double crochet into the first stitch. Then we're going to double crochet into this little space we've got here, the first space. And then we're going to put one double crochet into each of these wrapped stitches, these two half doubles. We're going to put one in one, one in the next. And then the next stitch is a, is a double crochet and we're going into the space. So we're going into the space and double crochet. Next, you can probably guess, we're going to put one double crochet into each of these wrapped half doubles. And we're going to continue along like that, one in the space, one in each double, half double of the wrapped half doubles. Remembering all the time to keep your loop um, true to the hook size so that it keeps everything really nice and neat because this, as mentioned before, this stitch really doesn't look that good. This stitch combination doesn't look that good if um, there's a lot of space between, between the stitches. So I'm going to carry on like that and I'll meet you at the end of the row. I'm now ready to put in my last stitch, which goes into um, the first half double that I made from the previous round, row rather. And you should have 24 stitches. So if you can see here right at the end, we've got a little chain two. But as you see, those chain twos, they, they disappear. And it just means we don't have um, that horrible hole the edge that you can get from um, having a turning chain as an actual stitch. So I'm just going to double check that I have got 24 stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23, 24. Remember we're not counting the turning chain. So that's perfect. So I'll just do one more row with you. And hopefully you get the general gist of this quite simple but very effective stitch pattern. So let's do row four. Chain two, turn the work, half double into the first stitch. And remember you're working into the back of the work now so you might need to tilt it forward just a little bit so you can see both loops of your stitches. Skip a stitch half double into each of the next two, half double around the two just made. Skip a stitch, half double into each of the next two, half double around the two just made. Skip a stitch, half double, to each of the next two. Half double round the two just made. And continue like that to the end of the row. So with this little swatch, just as a reminder, um, you will need to make sure that you have got 24 double crochet stitches at the end of each um, right side row. 
and eight little perforations or holes um, on each wrong side row. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the last one, eight. So um, as you're getting used to this stitch, I would highly recommend just every single row when you finish it, just count your stitches to make sure that you're on track. So I'm going to carry on making my swatch um, and I'll come back when I've finished to show you what it looks like. So here I, I have finished my little um, swatch which I'm now going to wash um, in some lukewarm water with some mild detergent. I usually use a bit of um, shampoo um, and then I'm going to squeeze the water out between a towel and then I'm going to leave it to dry flat. Um, so that is really important with natural fibres, especially if you're making a garment, because this can actually really um, change in size after it's been washed.